For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Sing it from your heart. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord for the last time. For the way. Alone. It's the way of wisdom. Job began to speak, and he said, We know where gold is found, and there is a place where silver can be found. We know that iron comes from the ground. But he said there is a part which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lions have not gotten there. He said men have even learned to cut through rocks and mine minerals. But he said the place of wisdom, where can we find it? We are unable to find the place of wisdom. We went to the sea and he said it's not in our midst. Even the grave said, we do not know where it is found. And he said, it is found in the presence of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for wisdom. For through wisdom, a house is built and by understanding it is established. Through knowledge, the rooms are filled with every treasurable thing. We thank you for your wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah good to have everyone around praise God just pray in one minute and say Lord I'm ready to receive your word please pray I'm ready to receive your word let it change me pray from your heart I've prayed my life out over the prophetic word this year. I believe it. It came from the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 the prophet speaking said I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say he didn't just say I will hear he said I will see what the Lord will say and he said unto me write the vision verse 2 make it plain in other words let it be understood by everyone that they will run who receive it he said, for the vision is for an appointed time. He said, it will yet speak, though it tarries. And so this is the principle of leadership that God gives every Christian leadership. That we raise the vision that God gives and to make it plain. Because you cannot run if you do not understand. He said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Hallelujah. It's our culture to begin our first service every year by revealing to us the prophetic word that the Lord has given and to explain so that we can understand. Let me tell you, this year is a beautiful year. Believe me. Believe me. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, that which I tell you in the secret place, declare thou upon the mountain tops that which you hear in the secret hallelujah for the secret place is where his shadow is he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty say i will say of the lord he is my rock my strength my fortress hallelujah 
and the Lord has declared by his spirit that this is our year of supernatural exploits hmm. do you believe it I believe it the Bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith and so I said blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance blessed is she that believes he said blessed is he who has spoken who will also perform jeremiah 1 verse 12 he said i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it he said my covenant will i not break nor alter the word that has proceeded from my mouth except the covenant of the day and of the night is broken he said i will not alter the word that has gone forth and so the integrity of god is behind his word and then we can trust that word say after me i believe say this is the year that i'm a believer many of you hear words and you just say wow nice words It's our job to always find out what God is doing in the world. And then to find out what he's doing in the continent of Africa and of Nigeria. And to find out what he wants to do in our lives. Hallelujah. Different ministries, different churches, different denominations, groups have corporate words that God has given them. Hallelujah. And it's our job to bring words that will guide us in prophecy. Hallelujah. He said the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secret to his servants, the prophets. Amos 3 verse 9. So let's look at Daniel 11. That it cover all the earth. Let the way of your glory for let it cover all hallelujah are you there and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries he said but the people who do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The people who know their God, they shall be strong and as a result, they will do exploits. Say, so let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. But let him that glory at glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth God. The treasure of the believer is the knowledge of God. And he said, in this season, for they that know their God, they shall be strong. Strong by the Spirit. And as a result, they shall do exploits. Hallelujah. The Lord gave us this word and began to communicate unto us the things that we would expect. And I'll be sharing very briefly i'll be sharing some of them our focus we believe in vision and the bible says without vision the people cast off restraint hallelujah vision brings order vision brings focus vision helps you to align with the holy ghost vision lets you know what god is not doing vision lets you know the emphasis of god for every season so that you do not find yourself relating in the old wine because when the, the apostles were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, they that stood outside said, These men have taken new wine, not an old wine. Hallelujah. The thing about God is that at every level, He reveals something fresh and new. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for the things He'll be doing this year. It's a season of supernatural exploits. What do we expect this year? 
I'll tell us the things God has shown me. Hallelujah. The chaos will continue in the world. For it is not taking believers unawares. The darkness will be more. The economic meltdown will not stop. I said it in 2007. And I said another one was coming. It has begun. The Lord will break the pride of wicked men. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me a lot of catastrophe and chaos. Especially within the European nations. I still saw hurricanes. Plots of terrorism. And the death of major leaders. Hallelujah. But then as much as this is happening. There will be. An emergence of glory such as never seen. Especially around the Asian nations. There will be such a global awakening. Sweeping across Asia. Singapore and China, the Lord showed me. Will carry a degree and dimension of fire. The first time I saw this vision was in 2005. I saw little Chinese children. Remember I shared it? 2005. And the Lord told me this is the year when it will manifest. There will be an emergence, an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Sweeping across nation, Asia. There will be supernatural encounters among Arab nations. Jesus himself will appear in dramatic. He will appear in places of worship. Appear to families without an individual leading them to Christ. Their encounter will be solid and real. This will happen in rapid succession. Hallelujah. The economy of Africa will rise in this year. In a very dramatic way. And three countries the Lord showed me will pioneer this. One, Nigeria. Two, South Africa. Three, Ghana. These three nations will come in with a level. Their GDP will so increase. Ideas and insight will come. Are you listening please? so what do we expect in nigeria hallelujah i saw a flaming sword there will be many deaths this year god will judge wicked men in dramatic ways in this nation hallelujah many people will be dethroned by the spirit it will start from the month of march this i saw Hallelujah. It will start in the month of March. I want us to pray for the presidency. We will pray. Because there is an arrow of death plaguing the presidency. From the president to those around the cabinet. Hallelujah. mysterious sicknesses mysterious diseases will engulf politicians in a way that will make them afraid many will be disappointed as a result of all the covenants they have made it will fail woefully hallelujah in 2010 in 2011 I saw the death of a presidential figure i was there in a vision hallelujah i was there i saw it and i just prayed and the lord told me it is for an appointed time and last year i was in a vision i was in a military place and i stood there and the next thing i saw soldiers taking their ammunitions 
and I saw them running around and I did not understand what was happening and later on I opened a room and I saw military men on their knees lifting their hands and worshiping God and they said the death of a figure that has represented terrorism I will not mention name for security reasons but I saw his obituary on the newspaper hallelujah and there will be breakthrough even in the areas of medicine this will happen globally the Lord showed me breakthroughs in the areas of medicine hallelujah many things will happen in this nation from the month of March you know what you know what Dr. Lukoya calls power must change hands there will be a switching of many things mark it mark it God will do things that will confuse people but in it he will be glorified what of the church of God God is going to humble the proud in, the ch in his church and his body this year in very dramatic ways there are three kinds of error the Lord seeks to correct in the church. Number one, the manifestation of witches and wizards who have carried suits and paraded themselves. For God will expose wicked men. Hallelujah. Number two, God is going to come in in his mercy to rescue people whose wine has been mixed with water. There are genuine men who have been called of God, but they could not wait through the trying period. And they began to dapple their genuine task for God with acts of witchcraft to complement on their anointing. Are you listening to me? So there are people who are genuinely called. God called them. God anointed them. They have a track record of seeking God. But because they were looking for crowd and fame and money and they could not wait. He said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. And many of them could not wait. And as a result, they began to mix their anointing with wine. I see the Lord stretching his hand of mercy. And then one of the things that God is going to be doing again is to help the third category. Young men who got up with zeal pursuing God without direction. And many hands have been laid upon them. They are carrying spirits that look like God, but they are not of God. They are seeing visions they are walking in power they are moving in miracles but even them they are doubting the source of that anointing god is going to help many of them and he will do it by bringing the word of truth and fire to purge his house this the lord showed me will happen in the body of christ hallelujah there will be massive evangelism in this country like never before so winning and god will use the tools of the miraculous an outpouring of miracles signs wonders even by the spirit of god do you believe this hallelujah and so what does god have for us There will be massive betrayal of people in politics people will betray themselves many people will betray themselves you will see it on papers you will see it around many people will betray themselves but the counsel of the lord will stand in this nation in a very surprising way the economy of nigeria will rise this year in a way that will shock many people write it the economy of this country will rise in a dramatic way a dramatic way a dramatic way hallelujah One of the things that the Lord showed me is
I saw many families, many believers taken to a stream. Remember the book of Gideon? That he took an army to a stream. And I saw many people fetching water, but they were not washing. They were not drinking it. They were washing their faces. I saw tears that were dried. And many people were washing. Washing away their tears. This is what God will do for many families this year. Honestly speaking, believe me. I wrote these things in detail so that I will communicate it the way the Lord. Hallelujah. And for us as a family of faith, what is God going to be doing? Number one, this year through us, there will be a harvest of souls in this place dramatic harvest of souls massive salvations and it will happen through the manifestation of strange and awe-inspiring miracles i'm telling you this now so that you will believe number two there will be a mighty manifestation of the miraculous if you think you've seen the miraculous last year you've not seen anything you will see miracles that will cause your tongue to cleave to your teeth. Hallelujah. Number three. There will be a manifestation of great wealth and prosperity. For many people it's going to be a shock. I know we all know we'll be blessed. But you will see prosperity that will make you afraid. Do you believe this? And the Lord told me this will happen for three reasons. Number one, for our comfort. Number two, establishment. This is a year of establishment for many people. You will be established. And number three, for kingdom activities. And the weapon God will use is favor and wisdom. Favor and wisdom. This will be the tools that God will I'm trying to give you specifics so that you don't live here confused at all. Favor and wisdom. Are you writing, please? Number four, there will be a display of the manifold wisdom of God this year. The manifold wisdom, multifaceted wisdom of God. In our midst, through us, through you. Every time I say us, I'm not talking about myself or the ministers. Through you. The Bible says that it be known to the principalities and powers. The multifaceted wisdom. Number five. The Lord told me he will put a crown of honor upon the heads of many people. A crown of honor a crown of honor a crown of honor when the Lord told me this I received it with tears in my eyes many of you have not experienced what it means for God to honor a man and King Ahasuerus told Mordecai he said come there is something I have prepared for you to do a man who was sitting by the gates and the Bible says it was Haman who designed the package for the honor of Mordecai and Mordecai was put on a chariot and made to go around the city listen there are some things that are bigger than money honor is one of them are you listening to me Job said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle he said I wash my feet with butter the ancients spoke about me close to the gates he said the young men saw me and they bowed their head that's called honor there is a way God will put a mantle of honor upon a man there is an atmosphere a carriage of grace and glory that you carry is beyond your age this is not about money this is not just about anointing that you become a subject of discussion and people say what has the Lord has done mighty things for them he said when the Lord shall turn again the captivity of Zion we will be like them that dream and even the hidden will testify and say the Lord has done great things for us 
the Lord will put a crown of honor upon the heads of many people many people you will be distinguished you cannot even explain it anywhere you go you eat in a restaurant somebody says I want to pay for you this one is not just favor it's honor hallelujah you come late and someone say I've kept a seat for you honor why does God honor us to give us influence so that we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom these are the things that the Lord will be doing in our midst this year and so our focus as a ministry this year will be to number one to engage in massive salvation of sinners I'm telling you what we will be doing as a family of faith we won't do anything outside this will concentrate on soul winning like never before this year and every one of us inside and outside hearing me you must be a part of this massive soul winning we will bring a harvest a harvest of people the lord told me something he said son if you will give me souls i will give you the miraculous like you have never seen i said god if that is the deal no problem he said if you will give me souls you will see the miraculous let me tell you something the miraculous only answers to evangelism because the purpose of miracles is to bring many to the fold so any man any ministry that is actively engaged in the miraculous without soul winning their source of anointing is questionable hallelujah massive salvation of souls by the grace of god every one friday will give an opportunity for people to get born again not just the miracle service every friday beginning from today and any other special program at all number two we'll continue with building and equipping the saints as we've always done keep building people equipping the saints number three healing the sick setting the captives free and releasing breakthroughs to lives and families not only through our miracle services but i trust that every service this year will be a miracle service indeed hallelujah number four this year we will open financial doors to god's people to bring about comfort to bring about establishment and to provide an opportunity to sow into kingdom advancement how many of you believe the things I'm sharing? God will do it. Now what is the key here? Listen, every time God tells you that this is what he wants to do, he will show you the key. Hallelujah. And the Lord told me the key is the presence of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. He says, Moses speaking said, we will not leave here if your presence will not go with us. He said, for how shall they know that we are a separate people? The mystery of his divine presence. He says, and God walking with them, confirming the word. God walking with them. God walking with them. This year, I want you to walk in the consciousness that God is with you. I've been saying this thing all through when God gave me this word. God is with me. I'm not alone. Can I have someone here? God walking. So Sam is not walking alone. God walking. Worship team as you're ministering. Be conscious of his divine presence. God. As IK is playing the keyboard. God walking with you. As we're ministering the word. God walking with us listen when god walks with a man even if they don't respect you they will respect the one who is walking with you and god walking with them and god the mystery of his divine presence the presence of god manifested in the person of the holy spirit that's why from the sms i sent to us 
I said it will be done by the hand of God. The hand of God is not some mystery. The hand of God is the operation of the spirit of power. He said, if I cast out devils through the finger of God, and the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Acts 10, 38. And he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. Koinonia will do exploits this year because God is with us. We will do things that men say cannot be done. Impossible salvations. Dramatic testimonies by the Spirit of God. Increase and expansion. Financial breakthroughs. Change. Transformation. Every department moving in power. Everyone growing in grace. Having a testimony for yourself. And being a manifestation of that testimony. Being a sign and a wonder. Because God is with us. God is with us. His manifested presence. When God walks with a man, that man becomes a sign and a wonder. I'm telling you, this is the secret of koinonia. God is not just for us, but God is walking with us. This year, you must covet the presence of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are not magicians. It won't just happen by magic. God. Are you listening to me? This is the difference between magicians. God will be walking with us so that any time there are manifestations of the spirit we will let people know that the greater one walks with us. David Yongicho wrote a book called The Holy Spirit, My Senior Partner. I've been walking in the consciousness that God is with me. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Say God is with me. Say he is walking with me. Although I want you to just imagine that as you are moving he is with you. In class he is with you. On your job he is with you. He is with you. When someone looks at you and says you will not become anything he says it's too late. God is with me. The presence of God made a dry rod to produce leaves. The, the rod of Aaron budded because he was kept in an atmosphere. The shoe bread was kept in the act of the covenant and it did not decay. The Bible says God walked with them as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and their clothes grew with them. The soles of their feet, I mean the shoes that they wore did not wear out because God was with them. And when they called Balaam to go and curse them, he said, I cannot curse them because the shout of the king is in the midst of the people. Hallelujah. God walking with you. Say, God is walking with me. You will see a man, but the result will be bigger than the man. God walking with him. God walking with a man. As young as you are, some of you, you will do exploits that will shock your family members. They will say, where did you get this wisdom? They that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Do you believe this? That you become a generational blessing. You become a portrait of a blessed man this is what God is going to do this year so you are not only moving you are carrying his divine presence you are going with him you step into the room you are stepping with his presence everywhere you go this is what makes you a blessing you are not just a blessing because you are confessing you are a blessing because the blessed one walks with you Granting you grace. Granting you the manifestation of his spirit. You will watch yourself walk in all inspiring wonders. Because God is with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Sir. 
So these are the things that God will be doing in our midst. And this has been my prayer. I've begun to pray it for my life and for everyone. Hallelujah. We hope to achieve this through our teachings in Koinonia. We we'll have dramatic and dynamic teachings by the grace of God. It's our job to cut across every area of the Christian experience. Ministry, spiritual growth, finance, family life, leadership, the miraculous, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, vision, purpose, you just name it. It's our job to make sure that believers grow in a balanced manner. Hallelujah. Number two is our joy to let you know that this year we'll begin our school of ministry. Hallelujah. You've not had an experience of training. It's our job this year to pour ourselves to raise and train firebrand ministers. Hallelujah. We're going to have lecturers from different churches, different denominations. Hallelujah. Touching on topics and areas that God has engraced them. Hallelujah. So for those of you who have been called, this is an opportunity. It's going to be a great one, I tell you. We have a lot of ministers. We're going to have practicals for the students. Where we'll take you to mission fields. It's not just about, um, um, I'm called, I'm called, I'm this and that. All those things, no. You believe you're anointed. We'll test it with a demon in the village. Hallelujah. It's going to be a great time who teach principles of ministry and help many people to balance the error that is killing a lot of people whether you are a pastor pope reverend whatever you are you are invited be having our school of ministry hallelujah our anchor scripture for that is taken from second timothy 2 verse 2 can someone read it for us please very quickly so we pray We're going to teach our students on spiritual growth, principles of ministry, the anointing, church planting, evangelism, family life, character, ministry ethics, the kingdom, God's agenda, pneumatology, eschatology, management, and leadership. Hallelujah. It's a program that will run for four months. Weekend classes. Second Timothy two verse two. Anybody? Please. Okay. Second Timothy two two. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Hallelujah. He said, "The things which you have heard of me, among many witnesses." He said, commit it. Listen, the proof that a leader is successful is that you can reproduce yourself in many people. Gone are the days of that one man show in the church. Are you listening to me? Gone are the days of that one man, the man of power, the man of anointing. He's the only one, the king of kings and the lord of lords. And then we have the beggarly. No, 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 no. True leadership, the only way to multiply your success is to moses said i desire that my spirit will fall upon them if the only thing we have to say is that there's a group of anointed men and women ah joshua selman or oh, pastor jakes or bishop stan we are failures hallelujah the ability to have men and women who have been raised to carry the fire and the grace of god to multiply the things that God is doing in the lives of others. So this is wonderful. So Koinonia number one, number two. Is our school of ministry. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, Bishop Stan will be directing our school of ministry. Come on, appreciate him. He's going to be your principal. You better clap.
It's a real school. We are going to graduate our students. Don't you think it's some roadside? You should know us by now. We are excellent people. When we are not ready for a thing, we don't do it. So don't you think it's just some class where you... No, no, no. The way you know is cool. With examinations, assessments, we have a lot of prof in our midst. Thank God who will help us. Mon, that will come. Number three, missions and evangelism. We will do a lot of missions and evangelism. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we plan to visit almost all the secondary schools in this city. Hallelujah. We we'll visit them, work with their FCS, and have some time of impartation. We are not the ones that will go. It's now your turn to go. Hallelujah. Yes. We're going to send some of you. I tell you, don't think we're going to do some. No, 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 no. You will now have the opportunity to test the word. The Bible says, after Jesus had taught them for a while, he sent the 70. He said, now you go two by two. Go in my name. When you go, do not just fly around. Go to the Lordship of Israel. That's why we're not sending you to Kaduna. Go to the Lordship of Israel. The Bible says the people came rejoicing, just like many of you who come back rejoicing. Say, can you imagine? Even the demons were subject to us through thy name. And the Bible says he rejoiced in his spirit. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Many of us, I believe, this year will shed tears of joy because of what God will do through your own hands. So this is a participatory thing. Are you listening to me? You will be part of it. Many of you have always been praying. Your friends have told you, let's go and start our church. Jared, this koinonia thing. Won't they give us an opportunity to shine? You will shine and be tired this year. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, we hope to visit secondary schools. And um, we have a mission. Our focus will be in Giwa. Areas of Giwa and Shika. Hallelujah. Jake's had started a work there. And by God's grace, we'll do a lot you have the opportunity we will expose all of you to practical ministry hallelujah you will minister to the sick whether the people get healed or not you will struggle with them there when it doesn't work you will come back and then we will now examine hallelujah praise the lord this is how believers are supposed to grow praise god and this year we will also raise new leaders for the house of koinonia praise god Aren't you happy? You want us to die? We won't die. Jethro advised Moses. He said, Moses, this, this thing you are doing, it will kill you. He said, set leaders over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties. And Moses took the advice of Jethro, his father-in-law. And that's how he was able to lead two point something million people. Because they were angry people who he had to settle cases from morning till night. Hallelujah. Are you happy about what God is doing? And it's my joy to announce to us that we're going to have a convention this year. Hallelujah. Oh, it's going to be a powerful one. It will shake this city in and out. It's Tag Eagle Summit 2013. Hallelujah. All our members, all our people, partners everywhere within, outside the country, going to be four days of a reign of glory hallelujah we're going to invite ministers i'm telling you it's not the last time we had a program like this was kingdom wealth summit we don't just have programs as a ritual god reveals to us so from 2010 god had not told us anything many of you just had the stories hallelujah so it's going to be an exciting time hallelujah an exciting time all of you will join one committee or the other you must do something you are not the ones who will be sitting and warming benches hallelujah praise the lord it's going to be a powerful time we'll announce the dates a convergence of everyone that has been blessed through our lives and ministry all the campuses around the nation all the churches ministers pastors that god has used us to be a blessing some of the people that god is blessing around the nations ghana south africa and so on and so forth will come together and build ourselves and receive of the lord so it's an exciting year hallelujah praise the lord
And so this is a summary of what our focus for this year, the things that we are going to be doing. So everybody, you will be a part of it. Hallelujah. Say, I'll be a part of it. See, this is the year you must make up your mind that there's no room for lukewarm Christianity and say, wow, koinonia is... No, 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 no. Use the opportunity to build yourself. Did you know that most of the people who are strong today, most great believers that you see around us today were people who had the opportunity to participate in soul winning. When you don't participate, you don't know whether you are growing or not. Hallelujah. I remember when we were a lot fewer than this when we went to Pangshin Crusade. It wasn't like miracle service that you just have a few ministers. No. We just said every sick person, if you are healed, come and line up. And then our team that we brought from Zaria, we said, all right, everybody just go and stand close to someone. And you don't choose. You just go and stand. Your only prayer is that you stand close to somebody who is not crippled or mad or something. Hallelujah. I'll never forget Ejimi. He stood near one elderly woman. And the woman said, her hand is swollen pain over her body. Ah. Ejimi said, well, I'll pray for you. And when he prayed for the woman, he wasn't even expecting a healing. Suddenly the woman turned and began to shout. She said I was healed. He thought it was a lie. You know how Ejimi is very... He said, this is not true. Now said, the sick people come so that you get healed. Many of you will try it by force. This your you will do it. Say I will do it. Hallelujah. Send some of you to the schools around, and many of you are the ones who will be teaching. When they say we have in our midst a great woman of God, Bishara. Everybody just clap. And say, Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me this morning. Come on, give Jesus a big, big shout. hallelujah I want everyone to be part of what God is doing especially the blessings that he has said he will give us hallelujah we just have three prayer points this night number one is to say Lord we pray for your divine presence like never before your divine presence hold on I'm just telling you the prayer points first hallelujah and secondly you say Lord this is my year of supernatural exploits i will do exploits for the kingdom in every area of my life i must have a testimony i'm tired of clapping for people here hallelujah and number three you are going to pray and say lord i extend this word to my family it won't just be me alone every member of my family will be a part of this if they are not born again this is their year to be born again hallelujah praise the lord by the grace of god bishop jakes will be directing our missions hallelujah come on appreciate him our missions and evangelism so he's the one who will do everything carry the students it's going to be an exciting year in all sincerity Make sure that someone comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ through your hands. Make sure, listen, I'm putting this evangelism thing in your mind. Because many of us, let me ask you a question. When was the last time, and some of you, did it ever happen at all, that somebody got born again through you? You come every week and you see people inside and outside. Did you know that someone, hallelujah, someone brought them to the lord jesus christ many of you come here and you weep and you say i remember what my life was hallelujah this is not the year to be ashamed are you listening to me this is not the year to be lukewarm he said you are neither hot nor cold and i will spew you out of your my mouth this is the time to go for it if you mind the things of God and seek heavenly things, God will, all your needs are things that are not, they are not so, they are not a big issue. You just commit your heart. I'm telling you, this is the secret of receiving from God. This is why it looks like God has zoomed his light on some people because their hearts are determined to pant after God. 
this is not the year of saying lord me my thing my no concentrate on the advancement of the kingdom there are hundred level students scattered around many of you have seen them you just pass them and say hi say hi hundred level students anytime you listen anytime you see someone who is not born again the first thing is to initiate a conversation the rule is love not condemnation don't look at people and tell them, see how you are looking and you think you'll go to heaven. That's not how to get people born again. Love. So I expect that. It's not, it's not just a week. Many of you wait till we say, okay, this is our week of evangelism. And then you feel zealous and say, I must. No, 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 no. Get someone born again. Seriously born again. Because there are all kinds of born again. We'll be teaching it here. Genuinely born again. The type that will last follow them up give them an opportunity to know the lord jesus christ make sure you do something for the kingdom this is a year that you will sow into the kingdom like never before this is the year you will evangelize like never before this is the year you will not watch the sick pass you and say i am not joshua no authority has been given unto you this is the year you will say in the name of jesus that devil this is the year you will arise and say it's my year of exploits you call your loved ones and say in the name of jesus you are experiencing the power and the grace of god this year exploits in every area that god will give you rest round about but also that you will be busy doing the works of the kingdom so this is the kingdom year are you listening to me this is not the year when god do for me do this for me no what can i do for god which department can i be part of this year hallelujah what training this is the year that you would do everything for the kingdom there is no man listen to me the bible says but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness he said and all other things shall be added unto you marriage relationship cgpa prosperity grace influence many of you are leaders in your departments and your faculties this is the year you will extend that mandate and that grace this is not about koinonia are you listening to me has nothing to do with koinonia has nothing to do with e and i we are not the kind of ministry that say our ministry we are the this we are no 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 kingdom kingdom you would take the word of God to your departments for the students. Take the word of God. Some of you are in politics like the gentleman who came. It's not the time to say, ah, it's my season to chop while I watch others. It's your season to prove that a believer can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity, even handling a political office. Hallelujah. This is the year to say no to sin. This is the year to get serious with God. This is the year to cancel some friendships and some relationships. Are you listening to me? To turn and tell your uncle, I've learned to trust God. I'll do exploits this year. I won't give my body to you for school fees or anything. This is the year to make up your mind. Are you listening to me? This is the year to kick out all the rubbish songs and all the godless things from your phone. There's nothing like one leg in here, one leg out. No, no. This is the year you will stop struggling with God. Is the year you say lord i give up all for you this is the year you will be a fanatic for the kingdom there's no hiding it there's no issue of saying oh me this their thing is too extreme no jesus said listen he said if you deny me in the presence of men if you deny me in the presence of men he said i will deny you in the presence of my father it's the year to lift up his banner and say lord we believe you i'm a christian everywhere I'm a child of God, not just a religious person. I'm a fiery believer. I love God. It's the year to allow the character of the kingdom to manifest. It's the year to use all the blessings of the Lord to serve the king and his kingdom. It's the year to do exploits in your academics. Are you hearing me, students? It's the year to break barriers. Forget about all those rubbish testimonies. You've been hearing them. And if you are a new student in this place, I set you free from all the reports you have had. Are you listening to me? 
It's the year that you can make five points. I tell you. It's the year you can break barriers. What do you think exploit is? It's the year you will move with a magnetic brain. The Holy Ghost walking with you. You will do supernatural things. You are in final year. This is the year like Samson. You will push with the power of the Holy Ghost. Many of you, this is the year you will jump from that class. You will jump right even into 2 1. You will scare people. They'll say, This is a lie. You'll say, No, it's exploits. We call it exploits. You make a name not by talking. He said, Let her walk. Speak for her at the gates. Make up your mind. Every area, God is going to bless you, not just your spiritual life. It's the year that you walk in abundance. You have enough to bless people. You are the one who will buy a bag of rice and share it to people during exams. They say, you who begged last session, you say, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the King, the one who can pick a man from a dunk hill and lift him up. I trust God that the testimonies that we we'll hear this year is not that Joshua Selman prayed for me or Jake's that will hear that one sister prayed. Listen, our pride is not just to say, Oh, is the man of God. We are failures if that's all the testimony. It's time for us to hear that it was through your hands. Are you listening to me? That the media sent a post and HIV got healed exploits by the spirit that your room in the hostel becomes the place of deliverance the place of blessings that every time people come whenever they are thirsty they know they will find life they will find help exploits in your hostels i'm telling you students take over ab with yours the anointing is upon you shake your faculty shake your department shake everywhere not by making noise exploits by the spirit your lecturer cannot come because they say something is wrong with him you go to his office and say sir can i pray with you the lord walking with you the lord walking with you you're going in power the lord walking with you and you say in the name of jesus the one who i serve and the one whose i am i command that devil to leave you hallelujah that this year you will be the counselor now you will be the counselor that many people will run to you and hear the counsel of the lord this is what ministry is about it's not about having titles and parading sons I'm telling you, it's a season of exploits. Many of you will write books this year. You will be surprised. You thought you could not do it. The hand of God will come. Certain visions that have died, suddenly, like dry bones, it will quicken you in the night and you will speak. Say, write books on faith. Break barriers. Many of you, they thought you are the worst student in your class. But you will watch people run to your room and say, teach me, I cannot understand. For he has given me the tongue of the learned. Let me tell you something. Many of you will shock people. I'm not just motivating you. I'm prophesying unto you. Because it will happen. It's by the Spirit of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Walk in this consciousness. I'm a minister. Has nothing to do with pastor. Has nothing to do with apostle. I carry fire. I carry the life of God. If you are the president of a faculty, say we will shake it. No nonsense in our faculty. No keeping students behind. We will shake it by the power of the Holy Ghost. The best result will come from believers. The best result, I tell you, the best result in your orals the best result your mbbs medical students shake the campus this is the year listen when a faculty listen listen this is the year when a faculty will buy those pins and write it 
and go and tell the dean of the faculty that we are tired of death in this faculty listen well it's not just about praying in tongues we are training you to become agents of transformation you cannot do such a thing in your faculty and not be a voice are you listening to me stop thinking about yourself begin to take the influence of the kingdom it's time for believers one of my goals this year is to steer a fire upon the campus not by that name joshua selman we want to silence our name and let your name be the one that will be high I can do it the power of the Holy Ghost is upon me I'm not ordinary prophesy I'm not ordinary his hand is upon me his hand is upon me say it, his hand is upon me the power of the Holy Ghost his hand is upon me his hand is upon me in the name of Jesus I'm taking the influence of the kingdom hallelujah listen this is the year that some of you will influence Facebook. You will take your Facebook account and turn it into a ministry and a wonder. Many of you will take your Twitter. Listen, you must participate. It's a season of exploits. Hallelujah. Many of you will gain scholarships. They said don't apply who told you go and apply go and apply who said you won't get it don't let see this is the year to refuse any report that is not consistent with god's word you have been living upon the news of people break barriers say my village does not matter i cannot speak english but the holy ghost is upon me no inferiority this year no complex this year refuse it refuse it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. Yes. You can buy exercise books this year. And this, see, we are talking about the influence. Taking the influence to the social strata. Are you listening to me? Some of you will produce tracts and send it. You must take kingdom responsibility. You have been trained. Many of you, as you are this year, you will be paying somebody's school fees. I'm telling you, you will be sending money home as you are. I prophesy, you may not see the wind. You don't know how it will happen. But the Lord has declared, exploits is supernatural by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. One man, Paul, shook the entire span of Asia Minor. Let me tell you something. As a ministry, we are going to shake this land to its foundation this year. I tell you, I tell you, we will shake this land to its foundation. I don't see limits in my life. See, I want to, Paul said, let, I mean, he said, let this mind be in you. There is a mindset you must kick out this year. Many of you, when you come for Koinonia, you see others jumping and receiving. I say, what are they doing? Let me tell you what they are doing. They are taking the word of God, making it their own, and partnering with the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, yes, it can be done. Some of you will buy properties this year, lands, and even begin to put structures. I tell you, that it's a time of establishment. Take the limits of God. Take the limits of God. Who told you God cannot do this? Many of you will run businesses this year that will shock people. I'm telling you this. By the spirit, an idea God will give you in your sleep, in your dream. You will see it. You will feed your family. You will never beg any man born of a woman for money because God is with you. Hallelujah. There are many of you in this place. 
This is the year you answer a question your uncles asked you some years ago. They say, when will you surprise us? And you could not answer that question. Today, from today, I prophesy that this year, you will answer it not by talking, but by doing exploits. I prophesy it upon your life. Exploits. Exploits by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is what God is doing. And our job tonight is to stir us up. Hallelujah. There are many of you, they've spoken to you. Nobody enters a relationship in your family. Nobody gets married. Well, this is the year you present your fiancé to all those devilish principalities and powers. Believe it all. our messages will go far across campuses across ministries across churches it will cause a revival it will reverberate it will shake evil see what you see happening tonight is the spirit of revival many of you don't know what a revival looks like when God finds a man who can agree with him that's why he said is anything too hard the two is to find the man that can say lord i believe and tonight we are believers in this place we believe him there are many of you because of the blessings that god will bless you if they employ your parents and pay them three hundred thousand, it will be an insult because of the blessings that you will be sending home There are many of you here. You are not the firstborn, but grace will take you to that status. You will have a voice in your family. You will have a voice. The Lord will give you a voice in the name of the Lord Jesus. Many of you will run with the spirit of Elijah. You will walk on water. This year, I'm telling you, you will walk on water. You have been delayed especially for spillover students hear me it's your time to walk on water you will not graduate alone you will come out with blessings that will prove to men that even in the valley god was with you you will silence the mouth of wicked people in the name of jesus i tell you listen listen i speak to the spillover students i bring you a prophetic word they should rejoice not over you any enemy because God is not true with you. When he is done, one step in destiny, you will cover up, you will overtake, you will pursue, exploit. Are you listening to me? Listen, listen, listen. I'm speaking specifically to spillover students. This is not the year to just chicken out and no, no, no this is the season to know that like Samson that he brought you you will push with a strength you will not only push academics you will push in the area of marriage destiny forget about all those people that preach devilish messages making you feel condemned you need to rise to a higher spiritual plane and see what God is doing in the lives of people there are some of you who didn't stay back because it's not because you are lazy in the future you will know that's why the bible said judge not the operation of the spirit in the life of a man is strange there are certain people because of the weight of destiny they carry am i speaking to someone faculty president encourage your all the spillover students let no believer condemn anybody here are you listening to me This is the year when you mind your business and move forward and shut your big mouth over other people's issues. It's the year when you mind your business and advance the kingdom. This is the year when pray for me, pray for me must diminish in your life because the spirit of prayer must mantle you this year. Are you listening to me? 
Stop begging for exploits. You are not a baby anymore. You will arise and say, Satan, let me tell you something. I will not become a baby forever. At every challenge, you chicken out. No! This is the year to stand. It's only hell that has gates. The church does not have gates. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. The church does not have gates. We are limitless. Hallelujah. And I want you to enjoy prosperity this year. It's a year for prosperity. Prosperity gives you focus. Prosperity helps you to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Say it's my year to prosper. Oh yes, God will give you favor and wisdom. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That when we say there's something to do. You will be the one rushing with seats and say God bless me. I can't be ungrateful. Hallelujah. Say this year I become a nation. See. Something must happen to someone through your hands this year. Are you listening to me? People can't keep blessing you. You are coming for koinonia every time. No. Someone's life. So begin to think like a leader. Say, I am a leader. Inside and outside. Say, I am a leader. Say it again. I am a leader. Say, it's my year of responsibility. Yes. Stop being the child. Stop being the baby. You will grow up by the spirit. And begin to affect the life of others. The exploit is not one person doing exploits. It's a team of people. Worship team, this is your season of exploit. The Lord showed me, you will do mighty things upon this altar. I want you to believe. You will do mighty things. I saw it in multiple visions. Mighty things by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will have this year market. You will have recorded miracles as you worship. You will see it happen. Many people will come and testify that as the worship team were worshiping suddenly, I'm not talking of headache. I'm talking of major sicknesses. Because God is walking with us. God is walking with us. God is walking with us. So you must be a part of what God is doing for your life. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray now? First prayer point. Say, Lord, all these blessings will start from my life. If you are not blessed, you can't bless others. Say, Lord, this year, exploit. I become an evidence. An evidence. Paul says we are written epistles. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, pray. I am an epistle of supernatural exploits. In 2013, prophesy all the area of exploits. Exploits in my finances. Exploits in my health. Pray. Exploits in the miraculous. Exploits in evangelism. I am a blessing. I am a blessing. Like Father Abraham. I am a blessing. I will not be a burden to anyone in 2013. I will not be a burden in the name of Jesus. Pray. Say, Lord, I'm the first partaker of prosperity, of grace, of power, of wisdom, of grace. Say Lord I will prosper I walk in power Someone will be healed through my hands Someone will be saved Through me A family will be blessed Hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah. The second prayer point is for students. Listen. I prayed and I said, Lord, 
no matter how much exploits is done let there be academic exploits that's the next prayer point hold on hold on listen listen when i'm talking about ex exploits i'm not just talking of doing well making a mark and a in a cause that in the last 10 years nobody caught lift up your voice and say lord exploits Exploit, exploit by the power of the Holy Ghost. Exploit every student. Pray, I am not dull. I refuse that report. I am not dull. I don't care how many carryovers you have, I don't care what your academic story is. Say, Lord, I will rise again. There is hope for a tree. Though it be cut off, I will rise again. I will rise. Rejoice. Not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, I will rise by the Spirit. Prophesy. Save my year of five points. Five points. Four points. There will be a leaping of CGPS. Leaping. Leaping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. How many of us want exploits in your academics? You are going to mention all your courses one by one. If you can remember them. Are you listening to me? And you are going to say, I speak to you. I don't care what the story has come with the lecturer. I like you to speak and say no carryover this year. Open your mouth and speak. Every course, mention it one by one. It has a name. Someone has graduated from your department. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, I challenge you in this season. Your projects, your practicals, exploits, exploits, faculty of arts, exploits, faculty of environmental sciences. Exploits, faculty of engineering, exploits, faculty of medicine, exploits in the name of Jesus, faculty of education, all the faculties, exploits, master students, PhD students, exploits. Your work is the best, your project is the best. They are calling you from abroad, they are calling you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I invoke it by the Spirit. They are calling you. Your work will not die in that department. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Listen. So, students, no laziness this year. Are you listening to me? No reading for your exams. Two days the exams. Many of you have come late. Go and catch up now. Are you listening to me? Form groups. Do your tutorials. Don't sleep until you have done all your assignments. Are you listening to me? We will force you to excel in your academics this year. Because when you excel in your academics, you will silence the mouth of wicked people in your faculty. This is not the year of hiding handouts and doing all these stupid ungodly things if you are here and you are involved this is the year of your deliverance you share materials with people this is the year you will vow and say no malpractice hallelujah so begin to read whatever you don't understand break your pride and humble yourself there are many intelligent people in this place. There are many first class students. Listen, this is the year. Humble yourself. Say, I receive humility. God has blessed us with all calibers of people here. Hallelujah. Go and meet someone. Set exams for yourself. Don't read what you know and mark it and say I read it's not those that read that pass it's those that understand 
Are you listening to me? In your room, have discussions. There are lots of MSc students in this place for undergraduates. Don't sit back there. Say, I'm breaking forth. Say it. Go and get your hand out. No buying any with one until you've bought your hand out. Hallelujah. And you settle down. Listen, listen. This is the year you will streamline excessive and unprofitable programs. Are you listening to me? Because that's what is killing some of you. Everything you are running and going, everything you are running and going, you are moving, and this is the say, I will settle down. Say it. This is when some of you need to sit down. Many of you are students, you are sleeping 12 hours as if you just gave birth. It's the year when you will cast away slumber and the spirit of procrastination. Let me tell you, nobody emerges great with laziness. Not in ministry, not in any area. You must stay awake and burn your candles honorably. Are you listening to me? It's the year that if you see somebody being unserious, you don't just say, I'm minding my business. No way. Go and meet the person. Hallelujah. I see you excelling. There's a spirit that has been transferred to you. You will run with it. Many of you, your real glory will shine. You will see it. Hallelujah. Before you come for Koinonia, you do your assignment. You don't just get up and be running around final year students. Now is not the time to be involved in everything. Running from pillar to post. I don't know your house. Where in Sabo do you live? Go back and sit down. Because the kind of exploits God wants to do in this house will surprise many people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get materials. Pray. Take time out to pray. Have your group with your little classmates and pray. Don't be in a group of three or four and you are lazy and the rest are serious and say they are leaving me. Why won't they leave you? Why won't they leave you? They are reading. You are doing night call with your boyfriend. Off that phone and sit down and read your book. This is the year when you are decisive. Say, ah, he is calling me. If I don't pick now, he won't pick later. Does he know you are a student? Praise the Lord. I've come again, Abby. It wasn't the plan. The plan was to be nice today. But I want you to excel. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Last prayer point, your family. Listen. How many of you want your families to send their testimonies that God is alive? I showed you a scripture in Job where for your sake God can even cover for unbelievers because some of our family members are not born again and where they are today is a product of their mistake but you are going to pray. Say Lord, let them be covered in this wave of supernatural exploits. Lift your voice and pray. From the village, from their homes, pray. Say, Lord, bless them. Bless them. Bring a kind of blessing that will settle every divorce threat. Bring a kind of blessing that will settle problems and disputes between loved ones. Lord, remember my family. Change their stories. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, change their stories. I prayed for my family. I took out time to pray for them. Say, Lord, help them to walk in righteousness. As you bless me, oh God, bless them. As you lift me, lift them. As you promote me, promote them. Pray for your family. Say, Lord, remember my father. Remember my mother. Remember my sisters and my brothers.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we're establishing a standing rule in this place. Listen. Nobody will force you boys for your own good. Every one of you must pray for at least one hour every day. Are you listening to me? Don't say we don't have a place to pray. You must find, find a way. Everybody, are you agreeing? It's for your spiritual development. At least one hour. Preferably early in the morning and late at night. The sincere truth is well, one hour so that at least everybody can start from somewhere. Hallelujah. Let the spirit of prayerlessness die. You must pray. Wake up in the morning and pray. Just play worship. If you are disrupting your roommates, put your earphones. If you cannot, come out. Hallelujah. Please write these things. One hour at least, you must pray every day. Number two, at least once every month, you must separate a whole day and stay alone with God. Write it. Once every month, I'm teaching you the secret of power. Once every month. You can't be too busy. No. I do it every week. Once. When you stay with God, you will become news. But when you are gallivanting around men, you will soon fade. Once a month. Choose any time once a month. And stay with God. Hallelujah. You can fast. You can take light food. What do you do those times? Number one. Examining your spiritual life. That's not the time to say more power. It's the time to say, Lord, is there lost in me? Am I beginning to like women because you are lifting me? Am I beginning to like money? Am I beginning to be tempted into pornography or anything? This is the year you must flog it out consistently with destiny. Hallelujah. Once a month, you must do it. For those of you who are groups, try to do it as a group you will attract the presence of God and when the presence of God is with you every other thing will be alright hallelujah praise God so periodic retreats they that wait upon the Lord don't be too busy you can't be too busy for God and your destiny as you draw back you will see that you need to study more you will see that you have been neglecting some goals that you have set Number three, during retreats, set goals. Set goals. Financial goals. Marital goals. Academic goals. Structural goals. Especially for the guys. This is the year you will stop being a child and become a man. Hallelujah. You must set goals. Sit down in destiny. Where is my life going? I can't be escorting other people. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. But now that I'm a man, I lay aside these childish things. It's the year when many of you will come to yourself and say enough of childishness. So you must set goals and follow them up. Give your goals deadline. Many of you may need to go back and do it today. What is your goal for January? What is your goal for this year? Spiritual goals, what do you want to achieve? Financial goals, what do you want to achieve? Marital goals, what do you want to achieve? Without vision, the people perish. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of you believe this is a great year? Start with this fire and sustain the fire. Don't start in January and by February or March. Uh -uh. The Bible says it shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water. You are hot January down to December. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands as I speak over your life. We're rounding up. I declare that personally you will be a testimony of supernatural exploits. 
I command exploits in your academics, exploits on your job, exploits in your marital life. In the name of Jesus, exploits in your spiritual life, exploits in your finances. These hands that are lifted will work miracles this year. In the name of Jesus, exploits to every department in this ministry, exploits in the life of the ministers, exploits of power, exploits of wisdom, exploits of grace, exploits of honor. The Lord will restore this year. The Lord will wipe your tears this year. The Lord will lift you this year. The Lord will exalt you this year. He will cause your horn to be lifted. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you have no covenant with death this year. I forbid the noise of mourning will not be heard in your family this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as you walk around, God is with you. God is with you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord, or you were once a believer, but you are backslidden, you've just left God and the things of God will give you an opportunity. You're a new student, you are just coming. What an opportunity for you to begin a new life. Please keep standing. Keep standing. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, you're there and the Lord is convicting you. Please leave where you are and come out quickly come out quickly you need to make it right with god the lord is speaking to you we're giving you an opportunity one minute quickly hallelujah is there anyone I appreciate them i believe the lord is speaking to some people it's time to make it new with god hallelujah jesus more of you more of your wisdom jesus more of you Jesus more of you more of your power more of you more of your wisdom more of you more of your word together and just pray in the Holy Ghost for five minutes inside and outside let's hold our hands as the family of faith join with the family in heaven make sure you are praying in tongues but he belongs yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you we are the victorious one go ahead and pray tongues but he that speaketh in an unknown tongue and defies himself builds up himself in the spirit rakata balara bo shata bakata na bo rakata krakata balara bo konso krakata balara na bo come on make sure you're praying outside manta paka balara bo so krakata balara na bo rakata krakata balara bo rakata paka bros ko krakata balara na bo Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rakatabala Rabosh. Yes, Lord. Jesus. More of you. For it's in your light that we see light. Thou will show us the path of life. For in your light we see light. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important that our reception of God's word and God's spirit be conscious. Are you listening to me? You have to plan for it. You have to prepare. Prepare your spirit. Say, Lord, I didn't just come to hear stories. I came to receive more. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and when there was no more empty vessel, the oil stopped flowing. And so perpetually, you must be in that position that says, Lord, I thank you for the things you have done yesterday. I thank you for the anointing and the grace. Thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for what you are doing in my life. But in your presence, I pray, breathe upon me once again. That the wind of your spirit will quicken me. Make me come alive. Quicken my understanding to be able to comprehend the deep things. Cause me to see light in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, many things happen in the glory of God. Aside from signs, wonders, and miracles. One of the the things that happen in the glory of God is that you are lifted. Hallelujah. You are translated into a higher realm of spiritual perception so that you are able to comprehend. He said, who has known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? He said, but we have. It has been given to us. We have access to the mind of Christ. We have access illuminated by the light of his spirit so that you can see as he sees you can interpret things as he interprets and then you will walk in his victory so be conscious of his presence and his glory wherever you are inside or outside it's always the union of the spirit and the word he said the spirit and the bride say come it is the spirit and the bride that can tell the word to come so you are in partnership with the holy spirit asking the word to come say the spirit alongside the bride will command the word to come and every time the word comes there is a performance hallelujah lord we thank you So we bow as we enter the throne room And we cast ourselves down at your feet You are holy, thou art worthy There is none like you for in your presence, that is where we must be. Lord, we bow as we enter the throne room. We cast ourselves down at your feet. Come on, Shabbat the Lord, he alone is worthy. You are holy, thou art holy, there is none like you, for in your presence, that is where we are. For in your presence, Lord, in your presence, that is where In your presence that's truly where I must be it's in your presence that is where I must be the presence of God makes a road to board the presence of God stops bread from decay that is where I must be for he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, 
Thou art my strong, my strength, my fortress, my rock. For there is safety in your presence. There are miracles in your presence. There's deliverance in your presence. I'm changed in your presence. I become wiser in your presence. I am strengthened in your presence. In your presence, that is where I must be. This is part of Koinonia, it's a culture of worship. In your presence, that is where I must be. In your presence, that is where. I must be beautiful you are wonderful you be you are glorious faithful in all your ways my help and my reward you are glorious, my God, beautiful you are, wonderful you be, you are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, just the voices. My God, beautiful you are, wonderful you've been, you are glorious, you're faithful in all your ways, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward, you are glorious, beautiful you are. Father, fall like rain, Spirit of the living God, upon your people, fall like rain, receive it, its fire and its power, 
Maria. Outside, fall upon your people. The power of God is touching people. Receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, everyone, for it falls like the dew of heaven. Rain upon your people, O oh God. Rain upon your people. Fall like fire. Quicken your people to a higher realm of power, a higher realm of insight, a higher realm of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, let it cause your eyes to see your ears to hear in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. when you are exposed to the presence and the glory of his majesty then you are changed it's an atmosphere it's not just a person it's an atmosphere this is why you can be touched from anywhere it's an atmosphere it's a circumference of glory that anyone that dares to plunge into it will experience the tangible change a quickening in your mind not every revelation can be taught some are byproducts of his glory it's a quickening of the spirit that's why we are exposed it's not just about falling down it's an atmosphere and the create the effect it creates in your spirit. Drink of that atmosphere, it will change you. Hallelujah. the influence of demons not in this place we believe in the works of Christ and this is a place for emancipation three people hallelujah you will be free for death cannot dwell in his presence he is light therefore in the name that is above all names three of you please ushers I need them here you will know three of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, at the count of three, that devil, that demon cannot stand. No, not in God's presence. Hallelujah. For he gave us authority over unclean spirits to emancipate his people. In the name above all names, at the count of three, one, two, three. There's one of them outside. That's one of them on the floor. Bring them. That devil is a liar. There's one outside. Two are inside. One is outside. One is in this room. That devil, I command him to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. the one person outside under the influence of all kinds of manifestations of darkness holy are you
that devil of darkness let this guy go now come out of him in the name of Jesus every foul devil I set you free right now from every yoke of bondage there's one person outside please those outside lift your hands lift your hands those outside by the power of the Holy Ghost let the light of God shine upon every darkness in the name of the Lord Jesus let the power of the Holy Ghost bring out that one person under the captivity of darkness be free now by the power of the Holy Ghost it is fire upon you no devil can stand it you came here captive in the name of the Lord Jesus be free the Jeremiah I'm seeing. There is another Jeremiah. He's taller than you. Jeremiah. If you're Jeremiah, you can come out here. The Lord has a word for a Jeremiah. He's a guy. It could be your son name. I don't know. But you're taller than this gentleman here. The Lord shows me a word for Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Well, since you came out, let me at least pray for you. You don't come out here and receive nothing. Bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah, please, when you find that person is important, we need to pray for his family. Be seated. God bless you. Hug someone. Tell them I love you. Say it, hug someone, don't sit down. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone again. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, look at me. Look at me. No, leave her alone. The Lord says I should impart upon you the grace to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, fire on you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I welcome every one of you. This is Koinonia. We've been we began towards the end of last year considering a series on the full gospel. Hallelujah. Someone's auntie just gave birth. I'm hearing the cry of a child in a labor room and the Lord says it's somebody's auntie that just gave birth. Just to announce. Don't just rejoice for nothing. If it's not your auntie, we're not lying here. Don't clap if your auntie is not pregnant, the child will not jump out of the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we began a series on the full gospel. And then we had to pause and now we'll continue. Hallelujah. The full gospel is a teaching that attempts to harmonize the several revelations of the spirit that 
had been revealed to the church, especially the church in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And we began to examine the fact that the goal of the full gospel is to bring us into maturity. Hallelujah. That God in his character reveals himself in facets and dimensions. Hallelujah. And that as a result of pressing into God, several people through dispensations have been able to press into some dimensions of God. And have come up with certain revelations. Some of them have received exaggerations and imbalances. Hallelujah. And the goal is to be able to bring the church into harmony. And so we began to um, outline the fact that we'll examine the seven major doctrines that characterize the Nigerian church. Hallelujah. And we listed them. Number one, is the gospel of grace. Number two, the gospel of faith or what we know as the word of faith. Hallelujah. Number three, What's number three? Hallelujah. You've forgotten. The gospel of holiness. Hallelujah. Number four. Demonology. Satan, demonology, and deliverance. Hallelujah. Number five. The gospel of prosperity. And we're in the sixth one. Tonight we'll be considering the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. You don't want to miss this teaching. This is a solid teaching tonight. The gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. In a street in the United States of America called Azusa, there was a great man of God who had a lecture and used to teach students called Charles Farnham. Hallelujah. Was a great man, fiery man of the spirit. This was during the revivals of the generals. Now they had seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They had seen miracles because people like Alexander Dewe, um, people like, um, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Sorry. Yes, Maria Woodward Ita and several people had carried the fire and the power of the spirit. They had seen miracles, people like Amphi McPherson, the woman who would do stretcher only meetings. So they had seen the revivals of the spirit. But then this gentleman would be teaching, and then racism was very strong in the Western world. Hallelujah. And there was a black one eyed man, one of his eyes wasn't so good. To worsen the case, he was black and then he was one-eyed. And so he wouldn't be allowed to join the school of ministry. Hallelujah. And that gentleman would stand outside the class and just be listening. And Charles began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom. Began to expound scriptures, just like Koinonia. And the guy would stand outside, the only man in the overflow. And he would listen. Hallelujah. Little would we know that that man would be the pioneer of what we know in proper to be the charismatic move of the spirit. What we call the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. It took the fire, the manifestation. It was said historically that the same way the flames of fire fell upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2. That was the exact same way. The flames of fire fell. They saw it. The cloven tongues. It fell upon them. On that street called Azusa. And it sparked a revival of the charismatic move of the spirit. That men in mass. He that told. It used to be single individuals. All right. And then people come to receive. But now it, there was a widespread manifestation of men demonstrating the character of the spirit solid power they did impossible things in mass and that fire began to translate from one city to one city one country to one country one continent to another hallelujah then somehow it fell in africa also 
And our father has caught that fire. Hallelujah. Great men who walked in power. Not many of them are known. Alongside with men like Apostle Babalola. We only know him because he's a founder of a ministry. But there were many more. Hallelujah. Men and women who caught this fire. Suddenly men began to press into certain dimensions of God. And they saw that the Holy Ghost can take hold of a man. Such that he begins to exhibit his character in that man. Hallelujah. They saw ordinary men doing the deeds of God. Men who you couldn't stand close to them. Hallelujah. Meters away from them, you were under the anointing. And they were exhibiting the character of another being. Just like a demon would possess a man. And the man would assume the character of that demon. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit began to give them insight. And that sparked a dimension of power in the church like we have never seen and through the years especially in nigeria we had great men and women now listen don't confuse just the walking of miracles or just provoking things through faith with the charismatic move the charismatic move was a demonstration of the spirit it wasn't just healing alone are you listening to me it was a demonstration of the character of the spirit men who did things it wasn't just healing the sick on the street their presence devils cried at their presence they did all kinds of they performed more miracles unconsciously than they did consciously hallelujah they would get up from a seat you come and sit back there and devils will leave it was an awesome display of the spirit it opened up a new and a strange dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And today we have great ministries who still carry that banner. Ministries like Christ Embassy. A typical replica of the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the power of the spirit. In a charismatic move, it's not an individual that just are you following me now other moves an individual carried the fire then others came to receive but in the, a charisma a typical charismatic move has the least person able to dispense the things of the spirit there are ministries that you see one geo all right one geo if it's not around nothing happens but there are ministries that even if you call five people and say just go out they will be able to reproduce the demonstration of the spirit that's a charismatic move Hallelujah. The word charismatic comes from the Greek word charis, grace. A demonstration of the grace of God upon a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. And a lot has happened to this move over the years. And tonight we'll be examining it. Hallelujah. When you put on your television, many things happen to you. You smile, you get angry. Hallelujah. Because there are different kinds of what we know today to be the charismatic move. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2. Where is the foundation of this gospel of power? Please follow this teaching tonight. It's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2. It was that move of the spirit that brought us into the consciousness of what we know as the presence of God. People didn't know so much about the presence of God and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Now you hear people say, I sat down. Just like it's happening to some of you. And it's like electricity all over my body. Some of you are shaking, vibrating. This is a manifestation. It was that move that began to bring us into this consciousness. Hallelujah. Many people didn't even know what it stood for. Many of you get to pray and there are, there's all kinds of things happening to you. Warm sensation, cold sensation, fire on your eyes, your feet, your knees. You know, all of these moves of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. You don't want to imagine how I love teaching about things like this. Praise God. 
And I, brethren, this is Paul speaking, when I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech. I wish the church in Nigeria can read this verse again and again. Or of wisdom. This wisdom is Sophia. Human wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Two. For I determined not to know anything among you. Except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness. And in fear. And in so much trembling. Verse four. One to read. And my speech and my preaching. Were not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in the demonstration of the spirit. And power. Why? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Hallelujah. And so this became the foundation of what we know as the gospel of power. Hallelujah. Certain people were tired of a dead religion. Of people coming in. The sick would come in and go back. Demons would come in, escort people to meetings. And they would sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs for hours. And these demons would go back. People came oppressed and went back oppressed. And the Holy Ghost began to move in certain people and said, there is a dimension of me that must be opened up to the body. The spirit of power. That the power of the Holy Ghost can be accessible for a believer to wrought victories in righteousness. Hallelujah. Another scripture. 1 Corinthians 14. 4, sorry, 1 Corinthians 4. There are great ministries that have this as their slogan. Ministries like Spirit Embassy, Hubert Angel. 1 Corinthians 4, 20. Are you there? Want to read. For the kingdom of God is not in word. One more time. What do you understand by that statement? Hallelujah. What do you understand by that statement? If I say Jimmy is a man, not a woman. Is that clear enough? He said for the kingdom of God. In other words, the reality of the kingdom of God is expressed in the midst of men, not just by words. Words are not sufficient to be able to articulate the reality of the kingdom. It is in the demonstration of power. When the power of the Holy Spirit is made visible, comes into the scene, then people are able to see the reality of the manifestation of the glory of God. Are you following me now? And Paul said, when I came to you, you know why Paul said that? Because Paul was an intellectual. He was not just a dummy. I hope you understand. But he said, when I came, I didn't just come with oratory, the ability to combine words and speak nicely. For that alone is insufficient to bring you into the reality of the kingdom experience. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but I demonstrated something among you that proved the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, of, of power seeks to tell the church that there is more to the manifestation of the kingdom of God than just speaking. Are you listening to me? Just a nice, well-prepared sermon. And that true transformation that the body of Christ will not come into the full realization of the kingdom experience, both as um, an evangelical experience and as a charismatic Pentecostal experience just with talking. In other words, you can't keep talking to people about divine health. Are you listening to me? You can't keep talking to people about healing. You can't keep talking to people about certain things. The gospel of power tells you that there must be a demonstration. That the kingdom of God is the expression of that kingdom in Number one, words. But number two, it is validated with power. I said the kingdom of God. In other words, the manifestation of the influence of the Father is not just the issue of talk. Are you listening to me? Miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs. These are the visible manifestations of the glory of God. Please let me tell you something. The manifestation of the glory of God is not a cloud. It's not some mist. 
Listen, the beauty of all those things is that you leave that place with an experience. Are you listening to me? Say kingdom experience. Kingdom experience is not just in words. If I ask you now, what was the first message that was preached when you came for Koinonia? You cannot even remember. But if I ask you, tell me one remarkable experience. You say, ah, I remember I brought one brother that was just shouting, I won't keep quiet. Five minutes later, that guy was praying in tongues. That's an experience. Are you listening to me? People can forget talk and words, but an experience initiates them into the reality of anything. Hallelujah. This is why when you go to a herbalist, he doesn't do too much of talking, correct? He just bamboozles you with experiences. And you have to just calm down and say, this man is serious. He's not a talkative. For instance, as soon as you enter his place, you see him and then you don't see him again and then you see him. And he says, sit down. You say, Baba, I'll do anything you want me to do. One experience. Hallelujah. You're going to be understanding certain powerful spiritual keys about the gospel of power. So miracles, signs, and wonders are the visible manifestation of the glory and the kingdom. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, I'm telling you the gospel of the kingdom, Christianity, what we know as um, Christianity is powerless. If an unbeliever stands and tells you that I believe in whatsoever I believe. And a Christian comes and says, look, Jesus is Lord over all. He came and demonstrated victory over sin and over Satan. Hallelujah. And you are able to demonstrate it. That there is this gentleman, come sir, just a minute. Hallelujah. That this guy comes in a drunkard. Comes in drinking and smoking. And one encounter... With the power of God. No withdrawal symptoms. This guy does not have appetite for liquor again. Doesn't have appetite for smoking again. There is an experience. Are you listening to me? This guy, if you ask him to preach, he will tell you his experience. You know why many believers do not have messages? We lack the experience of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. This is why we borrow messages from YouTube, Google, all kinds of things. Authentic Christianity is supposed to be a byproduct of a tangible experience where you encounter the reality of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough to say this is this, this is that. There must be a proving, a validation. And this is why the Christian experience of many believers is not strong. Hallelujah. We can sing and chorus, Jesus is Lord. What manner of man is Jesus? He made the sea to, to, to what? He made the sea to. He made the blind to see. He made this and that to happen. And many people with unbelief, he made the blind to. But you see, it has not translated into a real Christian experience. So, our unbelief has gotten so used to those songs, we don't even expect it. And when one person gets healed, they say, how oh, are you sure? Are you sure they didn't pay this guy? Oh, Jared, these people. You see, because we do not even expect that there is an experience. When a student is in school, you do what we call practicals, correct? When they are teaching you are sleeping, they say, mix this with this, you are just yawning. But when you get to the lab, when you try it yourself, you just smile because that experience has crystallized in your mind. We have a powerless church because many believers do not have their knowledge of God backed up by an experience of the kingdom life. So we talk about the Holy Spirit without any experience of him. We talk about the concept of divine health. We talk about the concept of prosperity. We talk about the concept of the move of the spirit. That God can transform a man. But there is no experience. Say after me, the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. Hallelujah. 
And the reason why the manifestation, the gospel of power is cast in certain Christian circles is because of the sacrifice. Listen to me. Because of the sacrifice it takes, many people are unwilling to contend for more with God. And so, whatever experience they've had of God, for many it's just a salvation experience and a little of theological experience. And we camp around there. And the more we read theological books, we believe that our knowledge of theology is equivalent to the knowledge of God. And you see someone tells you, you have been a theologian for the past 10 years. There's nothing you will tell me in this Bible that I will not see. But you know that this guy is being influenced by the spirit of anger. He's telling you he knows everything in the Bible. One minute later, he just slaps you. And then he says, I, I, I do not even know. This guy needs, he needs help. Now he's telling you I know everything. Hallelujah. And so we have many nice wonderful messages they give you the background they give you every well prepared sermon but with no power to change people not even salvation and you hear a lot of preachers say now with this message if you know you are not born again i pray that as you go back home the lord will help you to do something about this message can, can you imagine this is supposed to be an experience imagine an evangelist come on the pulpit imagine jakes for god's sake comes up and preaches i mean with power and says jesus save them he healed them he delivered them say so now as i wrap up my message i i want to encourage everyone who came from far and near for this mega crusade to take seriously what i've said I ask the Lord to strengthen you and uh, bring you to a point where you can see reason in what I've said. Now, hold on, hold on. You are talking to someone who just left his shrine. Are you following me now? This guy just left his shrine with a solid, tangible experience. And he came and met you making noise. One, PA, one protocol here, one protocol there. And you stood and you were making noise. And his native doctor calls him and says, please come back. Just forget about these noisemakers. Hallelujah. Christianity begun supernaturally with power. A woman without the aid of a man conceives. That's, a, that's an experience. Hallelujah. A man walks on water, defying certain laws dies and brings himself back to life the entire span of the christian experience is rooted not just in word but in power the demonstration of power now please listen because i'm, I'm soon oh you will enjoy this message tonight believe me whenever i say power many church folks all you just think about is somebody falling down let's do it come Two people, one usher, one somebody. Pastor Alpha, you are an usher. Come, come, sir. Do you know how to fall down? All right, just fall down. No, 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 hold on. You are getting. Okay, are you ready? Now, I oh, yeah, fall down. This is what the church calls power. Shame on us. This is not what I'm calling power. So if you are thinking I'm talking of falling down, no, that's not. You are, you are in for a shocker. This is not power. For many people, this is just church jamboree. Because demons can do that. A powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom of God. Many of you are not here because of our nice messages. Something happened to somebody you know, you, you, you know and you said, Kai, no, I will come and find out. Even if it's not true. We had a gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim. Remember him? Some of you. That guy slept in the grave three days to get the power of invincibility. Three days in the grave. Saw dead men wake up and come out of their graves. They told him to lie down there. You don't get up. You don't do anything. The spirit of the, of the man in the grave that he was lying, they said they wanted it to come upon him. After three days, this guy got up. He could look at a baby 
like my little sister that came and shared testimony here and shoot her no conscience that guy came for koinonia and sat down outside so imagine if we just came a beautiful suit Say, hallelujah somebody now this guy slept in the grave three days a christian experience elijah said look we are talking too much if god be god let him be known if Baal be god let him be known let's go and meet upon the mountain and settle this case once and for all he said the god that answers by fire that is god elijah was so confident he asked the people he said shout maybe he's sleeping maybe he went strolling and then when it was his time, he said, set me 12 stones. Let me show you something. I didn't come to discuss jargons with you. Set me 12 stones. He said, pour water on it so that you won't say by some chemical analysis, something happened and so pour water on it. Hmm. The Bible says fire came from heaven, licked up the water, burnt everything. And Elijah said, now that you know, none of you will survive. He said, follow them. And he slayed all of them. Hallelujah. The church was advanced. Because men. You think the disciples were intelligent people. They didn't go to any Bible school. Jesus sends them. He said go in my name. He said as you go. Go to the Lordship of Israel. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. The Bible says they came back rejoicing. Their first thing, it didn't say they clapped for me. I didn't know I could speak Greek like that. He said, even the demons, that was their first testimony, were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Many, we have all kinds of justifications because of the sacrifice it takes to contend for that dimension of God. So many people begin to give excuses. They say, it's not my calling. Did you see Jesus sending the 70? What did he call them? He told all of them, as you go, do the same thing. Listen, the fact that there are caterers does not mean every woman should not know how to cook. Correct? There are people called into certain ministries. The gifts of healing. But it does not mean, well, don't you cook in your house? All of these things people give for lack of fire. We try to give all kinds of sugar-coated messages. Criticizing people who are moving in genuine power. Now, note, note, note genuine power because I have another well-prepared dimension. You should know me by now. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have been trained. To contend with anything that is above and beyond our ordinary. How can a man just get healed? The lady shared a testimony now. How can an ovarian cyst disappear? Some of you are just saying, Jare, go and test with a real doctor. You see it? That's, that's a problem with a lot of people. You never were surprised how the growth formed from nowhere. But how it went down is what is surprising you. Someone will be sitting and his hand will start swelling. Nobody will ask from where the swelling came from. But when it goes down, we begin to complain. Someone had an ear. The ear starts eating up. You never say, is this not supernatural? But when no ear starts coming back, he said, like, like this one. At least Jesus, oh, we know. Malchus' ear, this is Jesus. So the church has been trained to reject anything that comes with power. But it is in that demonstration of power that Satan is silenced. Moses was a stammerer. He said, oh God. And God was angry. He said, in God's mind, he's saying, you don't need too much of talking. You don't know the experience I'm giving you. Pharaoh does not need English or Hebrew. Pharaoh needs a demonstration. Ten signs. And Pharaoh let them go. Not jargons. Ten signs. Demonstrations of solid power. Today in the church in Nigeria. Learn how to speak your English. Know how to add your vowels. And put all the consonants together. May God increase and bless you. But let me tell you the truth. When it comes to real transformation. If you want to be part of what God is doing. You need more than that brother. 
Demons don't hear English. There's one language they understand. The Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your English, through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. When Moses went before, before Pharaoh, it was a contention of mantles, not mouth. They threw it on the mantle of the spirit and the mantle of witches. That was a contention. Are you listening to me? The gospel of power. Powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom. One of the reasons why many churches have complained when they see crowds like this, for instance, they say, are you sure? These people are just coming like that. That's the point. Read Mark 1, 2, 3. I don't have time. I have other things. This is still an introduction. There are other things I want to talk about. Listen. In every man, we have a community and a nation and a world. Humanity is always in need of solutions. Are you listening to me? Let me give you the secret of solid ministry. Humanity is always in need. This is why God sends us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For as long as there is power upon you to meet the needs of men, they will come from everywhere to hear the word of the Lord and to be blessed and transformed. A native doctor is in the bush. I, I, I spoke to a guy, I think I shared it with you, uh, Jakes. I, I spoke to a guy who came last week this guy had gone to almost all the major shrines in this country. Someone took him there. Hallelujah. He went to the shrines. And they took him to some pastors and they couldn't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. Shame on the church for allowing Satan just to prevail. And we laugh over it. And we say, I'm not called into this area. It's not my calling. It's not this and that. Which one is your calling? What is your calling? To talk? Say my own is just to counsel people. Don't you know that people act the way they act as a result of the influence of demons? Say amen. amen. According to Mark 1, 2, and 3, the biblical strategy for publicity to bring unbelievers and to bring people is the miraculous. The biblical, I'll show you. Let's, let's go to the book of Mark quickly. Anywhere there is a true manifestation of the kingdom and the glory of God. Now don't you say crowd does not matter. Crowd does not matter in that um, God judges from a higher perspective. But without the people, who will you touch? The ministry is not to sit. Are you listening to me? All through the life of Jesus till he went to heaven. He always had people around him that he could minister the word to. Mark. Mark 1. Sorry. Are you there? Verse 21. The first recorded miracle of Jesus. As soon as he was commissioned, without delay, he casted out devils. Without delay. Mark 1 21. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in a certain, in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. Are you, is that in your Bible? So who does Jesus confront in the synagogue? An unclean spirit. Question. The demons in him, why do they allow him to come to the synagogue? Didn't they know that Jesus was going to be there? Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And so on and so forth. Verse 25, one to read. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice. He came out of him. Let's see the effect. 27. And they were all amazed in so much. That they questioned among themselves saying. What thing is this? And what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit. And they do obey him. 28. Please read it if it's in your Bible. 
and throughout the whole region of Galilee. Question. Who were those who took that news to the region of Galilee? It's in your Bible. One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. Every time people are touched by God, they are too grateful to keep quiet. The gospel was not supposed to be a silent thing. There is an effect that the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to do in you that will stop you from being quiet. That's how the gospel spread. In the days of God's generals, their newspapers were full of the exploits of the church. Correct? But right now, our exploit, our church is, is full. If you see a story about a pastor, it's how he raped a lady, stole from a church, did something, or one, one saga somewhere happening. Or that they suddenly caught him, wanted to rob his oil, and then some one member caught him, and there's trouble. And in the evening, verse 32, I want you to help me. Maybe I'm the one who is not seeing it well. And in the evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and all those who were... For those of you who say, ah, whenever, the, I mean, the power of God comes and people, the, people are being delivered, they say, oh, there's no need for this. Go and read your Bible very well and tell me whether Jesus did not cast out devils. Hallelujah. Those who were possessed with demons. Verse 33 again. One to read. Look at this description. A city gathered at the door. At the door. At the door. Jesus just sat down quietly. And they were just bringing the sick. And the sick were going out. They saw one madman that had troubled people in the city. They said, come please, this way. The next thing the guy came out saying, say, how are you? Good afternoon. Another man next, he entered and came out. These guys entered the city and people say, no, we have to come and see. Critics say, I will go. Women tied their let's see, Let's go and see this thing. And the whole city, no posters, no mic, no, P, no PR department. Are you following me now? The biblical tool to attract people to see the works and the wonders of God is the manifestation of power. Hmm. Today there are evangelists in the world who do a lot of things and do not believe in the ministry of power. If an evangelist does not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, he's not an evangelist. He should go and sit down. He should be a lecturer in a Bible school. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick. Is that correct? Of diverse diseases. And did what? Cast out many demons. They were not small. And permitted not the demons to speak. Because they knew him. Hallelujah. Now verse 37. He had to be running away from people. And when they had found him. They said unto him what? All men seek for you. In other words, Jesus was hiding. The man said, you better hide. I have a serious problem. I will sit down and die. Let me tell you, if you offer real solution, people will travel from anywhere and come to receive. If you plant your church in a river, the Habal is not living in a river. What takes people there? They drop their jeep and trek from here to like ABU gate. A dignified man. He said, I must get out of this problem. I'm tired. See, let me tell you, Every time you criticize the power of the Holy Spirit, the genuine power of God, you are a wicked person. Because you do not know those who are touched and those who are blessed. You see everybody seated in Koinonia. You don't know how many people have gone through things. Whenever you see demons leaving people, you don't know the relief this brings. Hallelujah. I assure you, if you are not receiving anything, you would have been tired of coming here by now. It's not because you love me. That may be part of it, but there is a bigger reason. You know that God is in the midst of his people doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. All men seek for thee. 38. And he said unto them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also. For there, therefore came I forth. Are you ready now? 
Verse 39, I want to read. I want to show you the secret of real ministry that many pastors have not read. And I'll tell you why soon. 39, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and did what? There we see it again. There we see it again. He preached in their synagogues. It looks like the synagogue had a lot of demons. He casted out demons. Because the talkatives were speaking Greek. 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, we have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecure men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They just see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for a real solution. So, so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work. Because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. There are ushers are standing eyeing one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money and newspapers come and see the man of power you are not a real man of power because when benihin is coming to nigeria all the newspapers beg for an audience what is wrong with you you are running where god has not sent you powerless christians who will not humble themselves and listen hallelujah the bible says jesus was begging and say, don't tell anybody. Let me tell you something. Have you had people complain and say, it's because our church is too far. For say our church is near. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. All those things are just jargons. It's not true. Say, for say, God gave me a land in Port Harcourt or Lagos. But I would have been suffering. You will be surprised. You think people are idiots. You see, men of God are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again. Do you know what it means? For someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia. You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks? Or they don't have anything to do with their lives? For the kingdom of God. Is not in the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power. John sent. He said, go and tell Jesus. Go and ask him. Are you the one to come? It was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom I see a dove. He is the lamb. He's the one that said, behold the lamb. Now John was under pressure and he said, go and ask this guy. In other words, I expect a level of demonstration. Now I'm in the prison. I've not seen it. Is he the one? And the moment they spoke to Jesus, we'll read that later on. Jesus just looked at them and said, watch me. He healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, healed people and said, go and tell John what you have seen. 
In other words, what in your law should be the character of the Messiah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32 of chapter 3. Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude. The mountain multitude. The seaside multitude. Everywhere multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I will show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. Many people have reduced the Christian experience so that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over. Everybody's looking. Nobody fell down. They just said this word, Jerry. This guy should go and sit down. Hallelujah. Miracles draw the people and then Jesus saves them. The biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous. Whenever there is an outpouring of miracles, an outpouring of signs, wonders, breakthrough, genuine breakthrough, that people come in and they receive the touch, the tangible hand of God, transformation in their lives, their families, their finances, their health, their understanding, their passion for God, then the kingdom has come. Hallelujah. Miracles are the tools that draw people to Jesus. And then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them. The clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person says, they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. While you are talking, it's only the women that say, mm, and that's just because they have a heart for God. But when one crippled person lifts his crotch every sleeper will wake up sleep will disappear one time hallelujah when a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down let me tell you something the next day you will have to beg for a bigger venue Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Reinhard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven people notably sick people were there he said by the next day the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people news news let me tell you something genuine news does not need GSM to spread genuine if it's genuine news you just hold on for instance if they say your accommodation is open this night ladies 
Many of you, even if you don't have phone, you will hear. That's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ. Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him. And this guy cannot sleep again. He's calling my old mother, my uh, uh, sweetheart, or my honey, or my sugar. And your old mother says, hey, hey, hey. The demonstration of the kingdom. When two of them hold their hands and come to church, your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice. Hallelujah. Say, I believe in miracles. Say it, I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination and all kinds of things. And you pack in and you do an introductory prayer session around the house to highlight them that one who carries true fire has come. Satabalia, and they receive the reverberation from their house and then you go out and meet the man and say I'm your neighbor and by the grace of God I've paid for two years the man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that many two years when people say hey this woman they gossip about it they say this woman is a witch I saw her what are you doing about it and you see believers so helpless Your child is coughing. They say, I know. They want to make money with him. Hey, hey, hey. This is how this boy will die now. What you need is a gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place. And says, what is going on here? And they say, this woman wants to. They want to do this and that from the village. Work all kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? They say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy. See, the Bible says, Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law. Sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted. I said, go and serve us, Jare. We are hungry. Power. Through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And, wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir. You the last person sitting here. Hmm. What kind of life is that? You look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye. Say, me, let's ask, oh, is this guy well? Is this guy well? See, we need a church with genuine, authentic power. Hallelujah. The miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive Christ. That's why after the miracle service, when we make altar calls, there are some brothers you see coming out, you know it's God that brought this one. The way the guy is even coming out, he's even surprised. What is bringing me out and he's still coming? You see him standing and wondering as if someone brought him out. Of course, it's the power. It's called anakazo, the compelling power of the spirit. Hallelujah. But the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles. You center your ministry around Jesus. This is where my preaching of the balance starts. Because you see, the miraculous is not a teaching, it's a demonstration. You just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry is all about miracles, miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ, God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. If at the end of all your display of power and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet, people
people do not come to the genuine knowledge of Jesus Christ, you did not glorify God. I don't care how charismatic it was. So you don't center your ministry around Jesus, around miracles, but Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, if I, not if wheelchairs be lifted up, not if crutches be lifted up, not if tumors be lifted up, not if dead people be lifted up, if I, Jesus, the son of the living God, be lifted up, I will draw all men. So miracles are tools. Are you listening to me? They are tools that bring people to Jesus Christ. If they do not come to the practical saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, then something was wrong. Hallelujah. But now we see that there is what? An error in the church. Still among the charismatics. That an emphasis has switched away from who? Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question. How many times have you heard preachers mention the name of Jesus in many pulpits? For many people it was last year. And they preached four times into the new year. They raised offering. They talked about vow. They talked about first food. Prophet's offering. But they did not mention the name Jesus. Hallelujah. They played documentaries for hours about the man. They just saw slow motion. He stands and heals the sick. And does every kind of thing he wants to do. And then he does everything. And at the end of it, nobody says anything about Jesus. And people share the man and he's so happy. Jesus is absent. Hallelujah. Jesus must become the center of our ministry. Not apostles, not prophets, not miracles, not money, not wisdom. But Jesus say Jesus is the center of my life and everything that I do say Jesus is the center in koinonia yes may God forbid the day that we we'll forget about Jesus and start marketing ourselves and marketing power and marketing Joshua Selman and marketing all kinds of things may God forbid that day where Jesus will stop becoming our focus. Either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us. And if I be lifted up, I will draw all men by myself. The reward for lifting him up is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him. Because he said, I will draw. Hallelujah. There are so many people in the church right now. Now listen. Because of this pressure of miracles, miracles. Right now, listen. There are so many people under pressure. It takes a while, write it, for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life. It takes the dealings of God. It takes the pruning of God. You must be proven genuinely. I'm telling you, if you want to walk in authentic power, Authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with God. Many of you see men of God who are anointed. Hear their stories and their sacrifices first. And then you will know why God has rewarded them. If I begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see. Forget about the suit. Don't be deceived by it. Behind every glory there is a story. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of authentic Christian power. But right now, there are many men of God. They don't talk about Jesus. They have no regard for the word. But there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches. Something is wrong. Say after me, something is wrong. And this is what I'll be rounding up with. We'll stop wherever we can stop. It's a series. I don't want to rush it. I want to take it in depth so that you get it. Hallelujah. As a result of the craze, knowing now that the miraculous brings members. And for many pastors, more members means more what? More money. Thank you. So you know. More members mean more money. More honor. More prestige. When you stand in the midst of other pastors, 
Say you how many members start here? Small boy, I should, why can't I sit with you? How many? 5,000. I say, here we can sit now. Say, I'm trusting God for expansion. And you hear men of God sit down. How many members do you have? How many members? And then the other one who has only 30 gets intimidated. And the guy says, you see. Three months later, the guy is breaking. He says he caught one principal. Oh God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power, have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches. Right now, there are all kinds of, any man, whether prophet or not, if you cannot see, if you cannot hear, sorry for you. And the Bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so. Right now, when people come in for meeting and they see the man of God say, let's go straight to the word. They say, ah, no falling down, no nothing. Uh, oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. Say, what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still walking with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one, we have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? Different men of God. I'm telling you, they have mixed their wine with water. I read an article, verified article. You read it, Jangfa, yesterday. About a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja, including a popular bishop. Now, I don't just read junks and come and talk to you. Are you listening to me? I have common sense. I know that this message will go as far as it can go. So if I talk to you, these things are verified. Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article, praise God. The article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman shameful immoral acts that should not even be mentioned and then after that there are different kinds of oil and according to this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back the most popular oil right now is called seeing oil they wash your eyes with it and you just look you can see everything hallelujah everything That's why you see every man just looks. You are this. You who just got married. And he moves in dramatic accuracy. Because with that in two weeks, he can triple the membership. Because the truth is people have needs. Are you listening to me? People have genuine needs. When they see real solutions, they will go. They will go. They have genuine needs. And this man is receiving money. Of course, if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed, ah, can't he take half of it and say, Pastor, I would have gone to India. Now you have helped me. Let me reduce your body in the ministry. If, if he one day you can make 5 million, is that not a lucrative business? Answer me. And then he buys another one. Rub it on his eyes. These men sleep with women and do all kinds of things, minutes to their, their administration to maintain some of these powers. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Then the next one, they called it, do as I say. Aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are? 
Anything they asked them to do. The newspaper one time recorded how that some people, members went to church naked. Remember the article? Some people don't read newspapers. Hallelujah. Members. Imagine a father and a mother say, are you ready now? Kids, let's go. That's what happened. Madness in the body of Christ. They entered the church naked. No, see, when I say naked, I'm not talking of Jesus of Nazareth kind of naked. Naked. Can you imagine everybody in Koinonia here naked? What is wrong with us? Yes, but that's what happened. That cannot be normal. The Spirit of God is not an idiot. We have misrepresented the Holy Spirit to the, to the world. God is, not, God is not a daft person. Please, let's not make Jesus Christ look like a stupid person. Hallelujah. And when you get that kind of oil, you can do anything to anybody. That's why you can see a man who buy his house. They just cut the scissors of the house. Next week is the pastor that packed inside. Brother, what happened? They say seed. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. When, when you see genuine things, you celebrate them. Manipulation and witchcraft. I was told of a man of God that saw a beautiful plot of land belonging to one of his members. The guy just pressed, hey, hi. And the lady said, what is wrong? Now? He said, you will die now. And she called her brother in UK. He said, let's give this man the land. Oh. They gave the guy land. He erected a structure quick on it. Now they are, they are in the court. The land is worth 80 million. The man manipulated them into sowing it to him. What if that man were your father? You will not enjoy for years, Kenna. Because one man of God has come to manipulate your, your, the, des the financial destiny of the family. Are you listening to me? And then the next oil is specifically for ladies. Hallelujah. According to the article, they say it's called touch and follow. I have been amazed at the, the vulnerability of many ladies to men of God. It looks like they don't, men don't have wombs. They don't get pregnant. So, a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable, you see a man of God just looks at her. They come for conferences and welfare. The ladies that serve them, after serving me water like this, you just look at her and write as if God spoke. Later, they come to meet you in the hotel room, man of God. Your message was powerful. The next thing, that lady won't come out of that hotel room again. What, what kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church? I was speaking with Jake the other day. I said, I don't know how people reason. Aside from the fear of God, I was discussing with Jake. I said, what if I tell you now, let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good. Hey, you can imagine. This is what I think about. Oh. I don't know how the men of God talk to the ladies. I was telling Jake. I said, Jake, now imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, you preach this against us and you run away. Your, your prayer now will be let really like nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. <laughs> this is how I'm thinking. It is my simple thought. It may not be your own, it's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. It said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything that passing scared, you are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry, you better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. You see a lady, you tell her to come and spend weekend in your house. You say you are, you are prayer partners. What, what is partner? What is prayer partner? Stop it. Stop it. If you are doing it, stop it. I'm not joking. See, this is what kills grace. So you see a man who is fiery. Tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again. I'm not saying don't be nice, don't relate. We relate with people. But that you must take an oath before God and say, Oh Lord, my God, by your mercies, would you help me? 
It's not by the strength of a man. But let me tell you something. There must be a determination. All the guys stand up. Stand up. Say in the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk in true holiness and walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus, I make up my mind not to defile myself by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive grace to say no to sin, to say no to anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And no Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies, stand up. This is Koenonia. Stand up. Please, we are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. You don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power above and against immorality. Say, in the name of Jesus, no man, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle would deceive me and mislead me to abort my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive strength to run with the spirit of Elijah. Away from every appearance of evil. I receive wisdom. I receive courage. And I receive power. God bless you. Be seated and celebrate Jesus in this place. Let's know that there can be real Christians in the body of Christ. For once, let's trust the power that comes upon the altar. That is not every anointing that is polluted. There must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of God. There must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching. Because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me. But I will say it. You know me. We will say it. Koinonia is where you will hear it as it is. Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings because people have been pressured all kinds of anointing there is the one for pulling crowd pulling crowd you rub it on your chairs you rub it everywhere members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again you see people fighting at home you must come to our church you must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now. Some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for Koinonia. Say, you will see. Just pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say, you won't come and see our pastor Abi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural exploits. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. 
Say, no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man, you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls down. No, they must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preach and say, oh, when God says, go, you move. And he say it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down and say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you announce that, ah, I went to one program yesterday. That man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest he be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying on hands. Anybody you just you say, oh, sir, the oil on your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual, He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is there are people who are struggling with things. Alright? But you see their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit. Together with the man's hand, he held his hand. He said, no way, not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading. And come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here innocently, who became victims of some of these people. The spirit of Christ, when imparted upon you, will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus. And all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of him and less of you. And so could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing has happened to some of our families. Are you not, are there not some prophets that came to your house? From that day, your father cannot become himself again. Your mother cannot become herself again. The, you will carry your money like this. They are paying your father. He, your mother does not even know. He's going to go and meet the prophet. In, are, are some of your families not suffering it? Say yes. Because it's not a lie. They brought one candle. They brought one prophetic oil for them to buy. Your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rub that oil. Oh. You must rub it. They said something is wrong. The next thing, he had three cars. Now it's only one. Where did two go? The prophet will drive it and enter your house. And say, how are you doing? He's well. He knows when to discern when they pay your father. And he just comes. 
your mother is tired of him. He comes. He says, sorry, I don't like salt in my own fish. Your father says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go and make you fish for the man of God. They come into families and wreck that families. I assure you, they are devilish. I don't care who. Because the true spirit of Christ. The Bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not breaking apart. So on one side we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a demonstration of the kingdom. But then we must be careful. Lest our entire attention be upon miracles. And then we allow pressure. That's why I told you that the authentic power of God comes with a process. We we're talking with John Fire yesterday, and I told him, I said, See, the way the church is, listen to me. I read my Bible. Oh. Do you know there are many churches right now? Because of the way the church is, there is even no need to read your Bible. Because they don't even give any respect for the Bible. The members don't read Bibles. I follow me now. Nothing happens. And then we have the generation of iPads. You can buy your iPad, but carry a hard copy Bible and come for Koinonia with it. Hard copied Bible. Because very soon now, you stop coming with iPad, you come with phone alone. Very soon, you just put two tracks on your pocket. And the next thing, you're on your way to hellfire. Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. Are you listening to me? There are great men of God, Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get to the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything, carry your Bible, carry a good notebook. You don't carry your iPad to class. You carry an exercise book. As your teacher is writing, you write. That's how you become a good student. Carry iPad and see how many courses you carry over. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Next week I will consider what the Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam. We are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon, to go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they send royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, you people should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. And you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation. To the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I will share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites, Moabite women... To be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them. But I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. It's in the Bible. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit. Inside and outside. Just warm yourself in the spirit. The word of God. Building us. Making us strong. Giving us wisdom. Say Lord I open myself. To the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, move through me. Let me become a manifestation of the glory in miracles, in signs, in wonders. Pray. Say, Lord, I open up myself to heal the sick, to cast out devils, that there be a demonstration 
of the spirit through my life pray the spirit of the lord is upon you and he has anointed you to preach glad tidings to the poor to set the captives free to deliver the oppressed to raise the banner of authentic power genuine power the power of the holy ghost say lord walk through me do impossible things through my life lift your hands and say these hands are blessed say these hands heal the sick these hands will liberate nations these hands will liberate families lift your hands to the heavens say lord these hands will open up the gates of nations these hands will bring the power of god to bear these hands will enthrone christ say lord move through these hands move through this body rededicate your body as an instrument for the glory rededicate your body say lord move through my body every fiber of my cell a superconductor of power i open the gates of healing the gates of breakthrough the gates of prosperity pray in the name of jesus say the spirit of the lord is upon me i'm not ordinary i'm a walking wonder i have the name of jesus i go in that name i do exploits it's a year of supernatural exploits lord i do exploits by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost hallelujah 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 now you're going to pray and say lord put your power upon my lips that when i speak to sinners or the sick or the oppressed let a two-edged sword the bible says he was upon the horse and out of his mouth proceeded he said i have given you the tongue of the learned pray say lord anoint my lips let me release the fire the power of the holy ghost as i bless bless the man as i prophesy let there be a performance as i speak the word of faith the word of healing the word of comfort make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and we're out of here. I'd like you to pray. We're going to lift up all the men of God that have been derailed. Are you listening to me? In a vain quest for power, some of them are your pastors. If you love them, lift your voice. Pray for the church of God. They may not be your church members. We don't believe in just denomination and membership, but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Help the pastors in Abuja. Help the pastors in Lagos. Help the prophets in Portacot. Oh God, we pray. Deliver them from witchcraft. Deliver them from error. Pray for your pastor. You know he loves God. You know she loves God. They are just being derailed. Say, my God, according to your mercy, bring them back. That they will denounce the hidden works of unrighteousness. Pray for them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. They love the Lord. They are just being misled. Pray for them. Mercy, oh God. Mercy. We pray for the church in Zaria our territory our jerusalem we pray let there be authentic power upon our pulpit oh god let god's people not be deceived anymore through dreams angelic encounters 
Reveal yourself to these men, O oh God. That they may repent and turn away from every work of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point. Sorry, I know we're out of time. There are free buses. You are going to pray for yourself. That you will not start now. See, let me tell you something. Listen. Many of you have not experienced fame. Hear me. Many of you do not know what honor looks like. You don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion. Job said, when I walked, the elders bowed their head when they saw me. The young men talked about me. When my road was with butter, there is a way God will honor you that if you are not careful, you can shift away. Lift your voice and cry. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Lift your voice and cry. There are many of you, you've not even seen anything in your campuses, your little fellowships. You're already bragging and making noise. Say, Lord, help me tonight in Koinonia. That Jesus alone will be lifted. Not E and I, not Koinonia, not your pastor's name, not your ministry. If I be lifted. Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion. Beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. I know that, see, we must take evangelism serious. Evangelism has gone out of the church of Christ. Many things is here now. Money, fame, apostle. God will give you those things. But we must restore the passion. When somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again, nobody says anything. They talk about a changed life. People trivialize it. But if you say you bought a new car, people stand up. I'd like you to pray in one minute. I know we're out of time. Say, Lord, if your heart beat is souls, I repent for trivializing it. Lift your voice and pray. My God, I pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people. Let Koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism. There are hundred level students scattered. Save them. I deliver you from fear. The fear of men. I deliver you from it. You will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul. Someone saved you. Someone preached to you. You must take the banner of soul winning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If souls do not come to the kingdom, let me tell you we are joking. Are you hearing me? If souls do not come to the kingdom, we can do our jamboree but I tell you, we have no notice in heaven. Thank God for the cars. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for falling down. 
But how many people can say, I came to know the Lord Jesus? How many drunkards can you bring to Koinonia that someone will say, I was a drunkard? You know your classmates. Some of them are not born again. You are, you are not doing anything about it. You are there bragging that you are walking in power. You will never see miracles until you truly need souls. If you are not ready for soul winning, you don't need the miraculous. Whether you are a singer, whatever you are, you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus. What if they get angry with me? Jesus hung naked on the cross. What will you not give up for him? The programs on campus, listen to me. I know there are many campus presidents. Make sure your programs this session are evangelistic in nature. We are tired of jamborees around. Make sure whatever it is that you do, let there be an ardent passion for souls. You must give people an opportunity to be born again. Say, I'm a soul winner. Don't just get them born again and throw them. Follow them up. Help them to be strengthened. That way, you can know you are doing ministry. Not when you have PA and PA and this and you have... Thank you Jesus we are ready to walk in authentic power we don't want to miss out on the kingdom just doing stories here on earth we want to be relevant to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. now before before I take the announcement if you're here, please listen, inside and outside. If you're here and you know that you've never truly made a commitment, please listen to me. This is a serious thing. You've never made a genuine commitment for the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have come to church. You may be a worker. You may be a pastor. Or you have given your heart to the Lord, but you know that you have derailed from the things of God for whatever reason. We do not condemn you. This is a place of love. But tonight, could it be that Jesus brought you to this place to begin a new journey? Right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I know some of you were invited by others. For some of you, you have been struggling and the Lord is telling you this is it. Find rest. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Right now, I want you to leave your seat and walk out here we want to pray for you you are either giving your heart to the Lord for the first time don't be ashamed or you are making a real commitment appreciate them they are coming from inside and outside appreciate them the Lord is speaking to you don't be ashamed leave your seat wherever you are and come out and make a genuine commitment for Jesus Christ that you are going to start I won't tell you to get born again because you will get a car Although the car will come, I won't lie to you that you are getting born again because of a house. It's an authentic Christian experience. Those of you outside, I believe there are still a, a few more people. The Lord Jesus is talking to you. Celebrate salvation. Learn to celebrate the miracle of salvation. If I be lifted up, it doesn't matter what addictions, what habits. The Bible says, come on to me, all ye that are heavy you are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest the lord is calling you appreciate them they are still coming appreciate them we are still coming let heaven know that this is a place of salvation not just a place of miracles thank god for the miracles thank god for the miracles but that the holy ghost will convict men of sin of righteousness and of judgment hallelujah Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for making this glorious decision. Some of you, you are giving your heart to the Lord for the first time. Some of you are making up your mind and saying, enough is enough. I want to begin a real journey. We congratulate you. The Bible says, as many as will come, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, those of you in front, and pray after me. 
as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you unable to help myself. But today, I accept that I'm a sinner and I receive eternal life into my spirit. I accept the gift of righteousness and I declare according to your word that I'm born again in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit come and live in me I repent of my old ways from today I have a genuine passion towards God and the things of his kingdom I'm a real Christian I begin a real Christian experience in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah let me pray for you father we commit these ones to you you gave us the ministry of reconciliation and lord i pray by the power of the spirit that these ones you will deliver them right now every manifestation of satan over your life i set you free from it right now in the name of the lord jesus every habit whatever it is that you have struggled with i command that it leaves you right now from today i declare you born again i declare that your sins are forgiven sister i cast out that devil come out of her in the name of jesus that addiction leaves your salvation must be authentic out of her in the name of jesus for if any man be in christ the new creation in the name of the lord jesus a new journey for you of a real genuine practical christian experience by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, I pray that you take over their lives in a powerful way. No backsliding. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. Pastor Jakes is going to have a word with you people. Hallelujah. You just follow the usher right down. You have your details and we'll follow you up. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for making this great decision. When you get born again, you are free. And you are delivered. Let your salvation leave a mark and an experience that you will not forget. No going back to your old ways. You will need to break away from some associations. Are you listening to me? Call them and tell them you are born again. Tell them you are born again. And that Jesus is Lord of your life. Just follow the ushers. Please appreciate them, house of God. Appreciate them.